So today I want to show you three ways you can add swing to your sequences, the easy way, the fun way, and the modular, somewhat a bit more complicated way. And some of these techniques will work also in hardware. Now the first way, the easiest way of course, is using dedicated modules. Many of you are probably using clocked as your main module in your patches, right? And it has built-in swing, right? Also in hardware, there are clock modules with dedicated swing, like PEMS Pro uh, Workout, for example. So on Clocked, we have, again, a dedicated swing controls for each of the clock division or multiplication. Right here, I have a simple sequence with uh, slips from Aleph Beats. It's sequencing the Pony VCO. There is also some delay, but for now, it's all the way down just so we can concentrate on the swing first. Right, so now I can add swing to it directly from the clock. I'm using here the multiplied by two. Right, so I can add positive swing and negative swing. Right, something like this. And the nice thing about Clocked is that uh, we can also modulate the swing amount. For this, we will need the expander. So in the right-click menu, we can add the expander. And here we have a CV input, a swing CV input for each of the channels. So in this case, I'm going to use an external sequencer to sequence these DC steps again, also from Aleph Beats. Right, so I just send this to the CV input of the clock that I'm using. Right now we have one step, no swing, a bit positive, and then a bit negative. Right, I will add some delay to this now. Very nice. Now there are other modules you can use in VCV to add swing. Here, for example, we have Sesame from Silly Sounds. Right, also here we have a CV input for the swing amount, and in this case we have also repeats. So let me show you this actually. The sound itself here, this is solo, the sound itself is two uh, VCOs, I'm cross-fading between them. Right, let's listen to this without repeats first. Right, so I have here swing amount, also modulated randomly with a random module. But again, we can add also repeats. when I activate this. Right, so in this case, you can sequence it with the sequencer. Right, and on, only when the trigger input here is high, only then it will repeat itself or add sorts of uh, ratchets. Right, and of course there are more modules like Swing from Orange Line that will allow you to add micro rhythms to your sequences and also this module here from Bidu. For now, I'm just going to add a nice bass to this. I have here the phrase sequence uh, with the classic VCO. So now let's have a look at the fun way we can create swing and that's by syncing two LFOs. So one LFO will be our clock. In this case, it will trigger a hi-hat here with the drum module from Doc B. You can see this here also on the scope. Right, I can set its rate. And then I will use the second LFO to reset or to sync the main one. The square wave will basically go to the reset input. Right, and now already you can see we get an interesting rhythm. And now by changing the rate of this uh, syncing LFO, we can get swing and even ratchet. So let's start bringing this up. Right here we have sort of swing.
right? And even ratchets. So again, this can be quite fun to experiment with. I have here some drums. I have the gate sequencer from Impromptu sequencing Tremo 2 as a kick and a hi-hat and Tremo 1 as a um, gated uh, reverb snare drum. It will sound like this. Right, and the LFO, one LFO is already driving the sequencer. Right, and I have here another LFO that again I will use to sync or to reset this main LFO. Right, so again the square wave will go to the reset input. Right, and we get interesting swing. Right, and of course I can also, or we can also sequence the frequency or the rate of this syncing LFO to get something with a bit more movement. So I have here a sequencer, again, steps from Aleph Beats that I will use. But first I will use a clock divider to divide the main clock. Right, I have here a clock divider, the main LFO will go to the input. And now let's say I will use a divided by four to drive the sequencer, right? And then the sequencer will in turn modulate the frequency. Right, so we get something with a bit more movement and just to get something even a bit more repetitive, I will use the same clock division to reset the syncing LFO. Again, just to get something a bit more repetitive. Right, so again, you can see why this is a fun technique. I have here also a pad with some chords, the wavetable VCO, uh, going through a filter and the chords themselves are coming from the note sequencer. Right, for now nothing is moving, but let's really uh, uh, use a, another clock division, every clock division of 32, let's say, to drive the sequencer. And I have here also an envelope that I will use to control the timbre here through the filter. Right, and I will gate it again with the main clock or the main LFO. So we get again this funky rhythm. I have here also a bass with dark energy going through some chorus, wave shaping, another filter. Right, and again I will use the main clock, this main LFO, to trigger this voice. So again, this is without swing. It's nice and straight. But now with swing, much more funky, much more fun. Okay, so now we have the more complicated way of doing this. Basically, we split the clock into two individual streams and then delay one of them to create a swing effect. Now for splitting the clock, in this case, we will use a flip flop. Now there are dedicated flip flop modules, right, that you can use. You can also use something like branches or the Bernoulli gate. This will work also in hardware with various clones. But let's do this again, step by step. So first of all, I have here an LFO, right? This will be our main clock. And again, it will trigger a sort of a hi-hat here with a drum module from Doc B. Right, and I will use the VCV gates module to split the clock signal. Basically, it has a flip-flop functionality. Right, so I'm going to send this LFO to the gate input of gates. And now again, we have two, uh, um, two outputs, flip and flop. Right, so just one of them will be half of this clock signal. Right, and again, we will use uh, one stream directly and one stream delayed, and we will need a way to combine both, uh, both streams, and also here there are various ways of doing this. I will use OLogic with the logic module from VCV. 
Right, so when one or the other are high, it will trigger the Hyatt. So once we will use the flip output, this will go already to the logic module. And now we will delay the flop output and combine it with the original. So for this, I will use the Instruo knock. Now this is a, basically an envelope generator. So this will work also in hardware and also with something like Rampage or even Maths. So the flop will trigger this envelope and then the end of cycle will go to the logic module. Right, so now we have basically the original clock. Right, we split both streams and then we just combine them back. Right, but now again, the longer the envelope, the longer the flop signal will be delayed. And we get swing, right, without. And with. Right, now there's another reason why I'm using knock and not a different module. Also the VCV gates, for example, can also delay uh, triggers or gates, uh, knock will basically output a short trigger and not a gate, which will work better with the logic module. We see this also soon enough. So again, this is the complicated version, but it works quite, quite nicely. Here I have a sequence going with the orange line, Morpheus triggering or sequencing kick all from Befaco. Right, and in this case, I'm using uh, branches or the Bernoulli gate as a flip-flop. All you have to do is switch this to the toggle mode and take the knob, uh, probability knob, all the way to the right. And then it will basically split the incoming gates to two streams and we get a flip-flop functionality. Right, and here I'm using Rampage as the trigger delay. Again, the flop will trigger Rampage and I'm using the end of cycle which means the longer the envelope, the longer the end of cycle will be delayed. Right, and I'm also using the steps sequencer to sequence the swing amount, which is basically the envelope length. Right, now, by the way, here, instead of using logic to combine the both streams, the flip and the flop, I'm just using a CV mixer. Right, so you can also try this if you want. I have here uh, also a Hyatt again, and in this case I'm using three gates modules from VCV. Right, so one will split the clock, one will be the flip-flop, right? Then another one will convert the gate into a short trigger, basically, right? Because again, the logic module will work better with triggers instead of gates. And then another one will delay this trigger, right? Will delay one of the streams to create the swing. I also have here an LFO modulating the delay time, right? Which is again, basically the swing amount. Right, and if you want, you can also use a switch as a flip-flop, right, to send your triggers or gates or clocks into the trigger and into the input of the switch, right, you set the switch to have just two steps, so you have one flip and one flop, right, so you basically split the uh, gate stream or the clock stream into two different streams, again, delay one of them, combine them again to one stream and this will swing a sort of a kick drum, a glitchy kick drum. Right, so you can see with this technique, with this uh, modular approach, you can experiment quite a bit. Um, and that's it, and you can see that something like adding swing can be very creative in the modular environment. I hope you will go and explore some of these techniques. Thank you for watching. Cheers.